Well, I've almost got the 118 beta here. This is a stock CR10 board here. Now well, this is our new unified firmware package. So this is a stock build of the CR10. And you can see the point U1, that's unified version 1 that we're working on. And you can see it's working here. So let me show you how easy this is to change. So this is a stock board. Let's say I wanted to turn on auto bed leveling. All I would need to go do is uh, scroll to the top here. So here's the new configuration at each file. And you can see here there's a section called TH3D configuration. And right now I just have CR10 defined. So there's nothing else here. You can see right here we also got the CR10S and then the Ender 2 and the Tornado. So the idea is you basically will get it and it will be Everything will be commented out, so there will be no machines defined here. So all you'd have to do is go, okay, I've got, let's say let's say this is a CR10 mini, so I'd get rid of these two slashes here, that uncomments it. So, and let's say I also have my, you know, if I had my easy out here, I could just uncomment that, and that would change the options to enable the easy out sensor. Uh, but let's say I want to enable auto bed leveling with our easy ABL kits. So I just uncomment that. And then you can select your mount here. So we got a volcano mount, which is new, and then our standard OEM heavy duty in the fang. So let's say I'm using the OEM, and that's it. That's all I have to do is change these three options. So uncomment this line, uncomment my printer line, and then what kind of mount I'm using here. Now you'll see this custom probe option, and this is for those of you that don't have a probe that we support out of the box. Now it's really easy with this new firmware setup is if you go down here, there's also some other extras, but we'll come back to those. So if you uncomment the custom probe line, which you see on all of them, so hashtag define custom probe. So if you uncomment this right here, you can then utilize the custom probe settings here. So this should look familiar to you. This is the standard Marlin setup here and you put your probe offsets here. Now, what you do not have to do on this new firmware is set any of your probing boundaries. Uh, some of you may remember if you changed your probe locations, you would get an error saying it couldn't reach it. Well, we've gone through and automated this process. So if we go here, we got all these lines of code here that automatically will determine the maximum probing area on your bed based on your bed size and your probe locations. So this means you don't have to screw with any of these. It's automatically calculating it to the largest possible one here. That's what these statements are doing here. So you don't have to mess with any of that. You just have to put in your offsets and that's it. Um, and that's only if you're using a custom probe. A few other things we've added in here that are more creature comforts is you'll see here. So if you have a V6 hot end, um, you can uncomment this mainly by what I mean is if you have a V6 hot and if you're using the V6 thermistor, so if you bought one of our V6s or you have an E3D, you're going to want to go ahead and uncomment that and that will change the thermistor settings to work with the V6 hot end. If you have a separately controlled AC bed, you can uncomment this line here and that will automatically disable the bed heater portion of the firmware since you won't be using it and if you leave it enabled, it'll trigger heating errors. Uh, one other goodie here is the Titan extruder option. So if you have a Titan extruder from E3D or the clones that we're going to be carrying soon, all you'll have to do is uncomment this line and it'll be good to go. Um, it'll set the steps per millimeter and change the stepper direction. That's it. So the goal of this firmware is make things easier for everybody. And I hope we're off to a good start here. Uh, there's another little creature comfort here. So those of you with CR10Ss that have a wonky filament sensor that don't want to use it anymore, if you want to disable your filament sensor, just uncomment that line. That's it. So we've tried to make everything more user friendly. Um, so going back to here, you'll see like this is going on a CR10 mini. I have my easy ABL and this is the mount. So all you have to do then is go to your tools. You select your board. Now I'm also going to release a new Arduino IDE. You can see this is much more simplified. You just have the Uno for doing the bootloader if you need it. And you have the 2560, which is what the Tornado and the CR10S use. And we have our Sanguino. You notice it, it says in parentheses 1284p boards that's because i've modified it now when you select that it automatically only lists the processor that you need instead of having to remember to select that i've also simplified that so it only has the processor that our boards use you don't have to worry about selecting two different things so if you're going to flash for the cr10s or the tornado you can just select mega and it automatically selects the correct cpu there's no other cpu options there because we don't use them 
And if you want to c compile for the CR10, you just select Sanguino or in the or the Ender 2 that uses the 1284P. It automatically selects a CPU. You don't have to do anything other than select your board and COM port. That's it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and upload this to my board. And your LC, it's going to go here and it's going to compile it. So it'll go through pretty quickly here. And then you can see right now, so if you don't have Easy Out or Easy ABL, it'll just say TH3D118.U1 ready. And then what's going to happen now, so you can see the question marks and the XYZ are still flashing. That means it's not programming the board yet. Once it starts programming it, the LCD will pause just like it did now. And you can see it's uploading. So we are no longer using AVR dudes because everything can be done through the Arduino IDE. And this is good because every single person, whether you're on a Mac a Windows PC or Linux PC, you're going to be able to program your board the same exact way no matter what platform we're on. We're, going, we're doing away with the binary files because this is a heck of a lot easier and a lot less confusing. So you can see here the new firmware is on there and it says Easy ABL ready. It's that simple. So I had, you saw at the beginning of the video, I had the stock firmware on because I only had this line uncommented. And by uncommenting these two additional lines, I now have bed leveling enabled. And that's it. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to have the beta posted later tonight for you guys to test out. Um, and this is built on top of Marlin 118, which I have been thoroughly testing on multiple systems here. Um, hopefully I can flip around. I don't think I can flip them around my camera. Um, so I'll just do it like this. So I wanted to get some feedback. If there's any other ideas you guys think that should be added before we push this out for the final release, let me know. I'm going to be adding on the TAS 5 support as well for the final release. And I'm still testing the way on how duplicator i3. Uh, the problem is we have had so much stuff going on with the New Year's and the holidays that I haven't had time to finalize it. I'm not comfortable putting it out there yet because the whole flashing procedure is not very straightforward. I'm trying to simplify it. So anyways, let me know what you guys think about this new unified firmware that we're working on. Um, this is going to make my life a lot easier, your guys' a lot, lives a lot easier, and help us put out firmware updates quicker because I just spent 20-something hours setting all this up to get it so it's that easy as just changing a few settings and hitting upload so thank you guys for watching and let me know what you think i'm gonna go ahead and finish working on this